Hey y'all, it's finally time for another episode of What's Cheering Me Up Right Now? Yay! Which I feel like is starting to be a thing on YouTube. I've seen people, well, when I say I see, I've seen people. I've seen Khaki from <laughs> Khaki Reviews Beauty do a video called What's Giving Me Serotonin Right Now? And when, she, when I saw her introduce it, she was like, I've, she said, I've been seeing people do a thing where instead of a favorites video, they just talk about what's giving them serotonin and in that way they broaden the scope away from just new beauty products or new products and you know, across all fields. And I was like, well, who are these people? Like who are these, who are all these people that Khaki's been seeing do a serotonin favorites video, a serotonin oriented favorites video. And where did they get that idea? And was it from me? Because I feel like I've been doing what's cheering me up right now for over a year now. And I'm not saying this to be like, I thought it first because I very well might not have. I'm saying it to be like, yay. Yay, if everyone's starting to just talk about what's cheering them up right now, instead of always filming videos about the products that are their favorites, because so much more brings us joy than products and so much more cheers us up than buying stuff. And that of course is the subject matter of this video. I'm gonna be telling you what's been cheering me up lately. Not everything on my list is is totally free. Like it's not like all free stuff, but it's just not the usual blog roll of like new beauty products that are my favorites. This is my version of a favorites video. It's it's like general favorites in life. If this is your first time to my channel, then I'm so glad that you clicked on this one. I'm Hannah, I love beautiful things, but you know, in keeping with the theme of this video, I like to focus on just joy in general and beauty at large and not just on buying makeup. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Because this is my first time wearing it on camera and because it really has been cheering me up, I have to mention this sweatsuit. It was PR, so I'm just gonna touch on it briefly because it, this isn't the kind of thing that I usually include and it wasn't even on the list. I just thought of it because I decided to wear it. But it did kind of cheer me up in a way that PR doesn't always because PR is usually just a company reaching out to me and being like, hey, we noticed you because you're an influencer. Do you want our free thing? And we hope that you'll talk about it on your YouTube channel. And, and then usually me being like, no, <laughs> but sometimes yes. Um, but in this case, the woman who works for this company who reached out was like a subscriber of mine first. Like she's been watching me for a long time. And then she happened to start working with this company and then they started, and then they released, they were a menswear only company and then they released sweatsuits for women. They do like this, these men's pants that are a cross between loungewear and, um, you know, professional like business wear. So they're comfortable, but they look pretty good and you could, you know, wear them to most offices. And because it's men's, they have options for different inseams to waist ratios. So if you have like a very small waist, but very long legs, you can get that combination. That's how menswear almost always is. And um, women's wear almost never does that, but they are offering that for the sweatpants in this sweatsuit. So I'm wearing, and I'll, I'll try to put a picture up on the screen. I'm wearing the sweatpants too. I've been wearing the entire set nonstop since it arrived. And I was able to get uh, this like high waisted waist measurement on these sweatpants that fits my waist. And then these very, very long legs. It's like a really long inseam. So they go all the way down to my ankles, even though they're so high waisted. And I've just never had a pair of sweatpants fit me that well. So I really do love this sweatsuit and it has been cheering me up right now, uh, but I just wanted to get that out of the way because I actually feel like it's very striking on camera. And I feel like many of you are gonna be like in the comments, what is that that you're wearing? The thing that's been cheering me up is just being connected with, <laughs> with you guys. I mean, it, it was fun to get that email from Tin. And I've also just been, um, I just went back over my Patreon messages this morning. I was like way backed up on answering messages on Patreon. And, um, and I just, I feel like I've been um, very more present. I've been able to be more present to many of you than I, than I, maybe have been for a couple of months. I tend to go in and out of how present I'm able to be to the fact of being connected to so many people in this kind of intense way. I can't be 100% focused on that 24 seven because it, it'll just blow my mind. Like it literally blows my mind and then I can't do other things. But when I can handle it, I like bring myself back around to being really aware of 
what this weird work means, like how insane it is to be able to be connected to so many awesome people. Connecting with Tin about this reminded me of that. And then answering my Patreon messages reminded me of that again today. And that really, when I'm able to handle it without having my mind completely blown, really does um, cheer me up because it's it's pretty special. I have all sorts of quarrels with technology and the way that it's tearing us apart and making us less connected to each other. And uh, so it feels good to be able to really look at it from the other side every once in a while and really appreciate what it does offer for us. And I feel like I'm a little bit in that headspace today. So that is, let's say that's the first thing on the list that cheering me up and wearing this wetsuit reminded me to say it. I promised you I would talk about Animal Crossing, but it's a little bit out of date for me at this point because Here's what happened. Some of you know this already because I talked about it in some videos, but my sister sent us a Switch, a Nintendo Switch as a Christmas gift and it already had Animal Crossing installed on it. And I didn't think I was going to like it because here's what always happens to me with video games is that I, I make myself get into it because I know that it'll be a good way of like giving my brain a break from anxiety and from work from work. I furiously play the video game for a while and then I I get, it's not exactly boredom. It's like, I feel like I wear myself out with the experience of being in the game and then I move on from wanting to play it as much. And the last time I talked about Animal Crossing that hadn't happened, spoiler alert, yet. It kind of has at this point, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve its place on this list because since I started playing it, sort of, I guess, in January. Oh, because the, the Switch didn't come, the, the Christmas gift didn't come until the very end of January. That was what it was. So it was actually the beginning of February. So I kind of had like a month long affair with Animal Crossing. And you know, I mean, I don't know if you know, I didn't know, but the way that it works is that if you get a Nintendo Switch in your family and multiple people are playing Animal Crossing at once on it, you're, you only have one island. We didn't realize that we were going to be on the same island. So Joe started and he named the island Joe Land because he thought it was going to be his own island. And then I started playing and they were like, welcome to Joe Land. So the two of us have been like living on Joe Land together and working on Joe Land together. And, you know, I just like furiously gathered fruit and planted trees and harvested the fruit and sold the fruit for money and like built my house and bought all this stuff. And and then at some point I was like, you know, I'm good. My house looks great. My wardrobe is extensive and I just don't feel the need to keep catching butterflies in order to donate them to the museum. But Joe, on the other hand, is like, really does feel the need to keep catching butterflies to donate them to the museum. So um, he has continued furiously playing and I've kind of been checking in for about 15 minutes a day and just, you know, selling a little fruit, buying a little, little pair of bright pink cowboy boots. Um, the really thrilling thing for me has been making my avatar in Animal Crossing look like me. Like I finally acquired the, the hairstyle that is like bangs with two French braids. I guess they're not French braids in Animal Crossing, they're just braids. I finally acquired the hairstyle and I was able to like put that hairstyle on my little character. And then I was like, I'm home. I was like, this is me now. By the way, that is what I have today, except that I have I've pinned them up. I'm, I'm just blabbering on I feel now about Animal Crossing, but the thing that I meant to circle back to in this video that I wanted to tell you is that one of the wild things about it is that you can visit other people's islands if you know them. And so I have gone to visit Ellie's island, my, my sister's island, and just hung out with her. And <laughs> there's something about it. I understand, first of all, why it's been popular during quarantine, just because it's so absorbing. There are all of these tasks, these tasks that need to be done and they're all achievable, even though it takes some patience and sometimes you have to come back the next day or wait for your flowers to grow or whatever, because it's like in real time. It all feels very low stakes and low stress and yet you have jobs that you need to do. So it makes you feel like you have, like the, like the things you're doing have an effect and like you have some control over your surroundings and those feelings have been so elusive over the past year, feelings of control, feelings of being able to like plan something out and then have them have it come to fruition. Everything just feels all over the place and time feels scrambled and cause and effect feel unloosed from each other. 
And Animal Crossing is just the perfect antidote to that because it sticks cause and effect back together. It makes time feel very orderly and organized. And even having the game match up with the days, like when you log into the game, it's like, hello, it's, it's, it's Tuesday, you know, February 18th. And like, if it is Tuesday, February 18th. So it just, it gives you back, I feel <laughs> in some way, even if it's a little bit superficial, it feels like it's giving you back what the pandemic has taken away from day-to-day -day life. That's why people are so obsessed with it. But this other thing that it has done is that it has allowed me to visit Ellie, even though it's just like my little avatar visiting her little avatar. We're both on the screen, we're like talking on the phone, but we're both on the screen and we can see each other physically together, walking around her island and hanging out. And she's come to visit my island too. And, and we could like take little pictures, like I was able to take pictures of us like together. <laughs> hanging out and I have this little photo album of us like hanging out if you would ever play Animal Crossing this probably sounds insane and I should probably stop this segment soon and move on to the next segment because the majority of you are probably like you have stopped watching actually at this point you like left the video at this point I again actually I didn't I wasn't looking I wasn't anticipating this when I said it at the beginning of the video but I, I have, you know, all sorts of quarrels with technology. I tend to think of myself as kind of a Luddite and not really being that into this digital world. But I have to admit, and I'm here to admit in this what's cheering me up right now, that doing this stupid thing of having my little avatar in Animal Crossing visit Ellie's little avatar and seeing us hanging out together cheered me up in a way that just talking on the phone or being on a Zoom call doesn't. I. I haven't really thought more about it than that. I've admitted it. Now I'm going to move on. Uh, but it just, it's true though. We were like fishing together and talking about the future. We were standing on the beach on her island, fishing together and talking about the future. Okay, the next thing on my list is actually to talk about a television show, but I feel like I need to immediately tell you the thing that's on this list that's like the total antidote to the fact that Animal Crossing has been cheering me up. It's like everyone who was totally alienated by the fact that Animal Crossing cheered me up, I now welcome you back into the fold <laughs> with this next one, which to be fair, has actually probably in the past three weeks been cheering me up more than Animal Crossing because this came into my life right when Animal Crossing was sort of starting to wane. And what it is, is uh, some flowers, some flowers. So um, my housemate, Oliver, his parents live around here and they've actually been in our COVID bubble. We've been able to see them about once a week. And basically we've been part of their family for the pandemic since we moved in with Julia and Oliver. And that's been really lovely. On my birthday, which was at the end of February, they sent me some flowers a bouquet of flowers. It had a number of things in it. It was very beautiful and it had some um, snapdragons in it and some roses. But one of the things that it had in it uh, was some lilies and they were in the, in the bouquet, they hadn't opened yet. It was all of these closed, you know, big pink lilies, but they were totally closed. So I took the lilies, all of just these closed up lilies, and I took them out to this little room that I've been using as a writing studio. So in the backyard, there's a, a garage that Julia and Oliver just use for storage. And there's a little skinny room on the side of the garage. And it's little and skinny enough that I'm able to heat it with a space heater and it doesn't take too much energy and it it's doable, you know what I mean? It's really little. First I was using the attic, but it's not sustainable because the temperatures are just fluctuating wildly up there and it's always either way too cold or way too hot. So then I moved out to this little garden studio and um, I brought the lilies out there. Little did I know how much I would enjoy them. Here is what has proceeded to happen. The lilies have proceeded to open very slowly and then one by one expire, but it's still going on. It's taken three weeks. Probably one stem was newer and the next, you know, they, they were like three ages or something. They didn't just all open at once and then all die in a week like cut flowers often do. Three or four of them opened and then the rest started opening. And right now I would say there are four or five full blossoms left and then the rest have, have died. It's partly because they're just lilies, just lilies in the vase. It's not like this huge chaotic array of flowers with leaves and all of these different kinds of blossoms like you often get when you buy cut flowers or when you receive them. Just a few stems of one kind of flower. So there's all this space around them. It's very pure, but they're also huge and really, um, they're sort of like pink 
and they're right in the sun where the sun comes in onto my desk through the window. And I just, every day, I look at them and I'm just like, whoa. And I think it's partly, a couple things are going on. One is just that flowers are, there's nothing like having cut flowers that you watch open and then die over a long period of time that you actually see every day instead of it just being a feature in your home, adding a little color or whatever. But if they're in a place where you actually look at them actively, the way that you might look at a painting in a museum, I mean, it's just like that. Flowers are flowers. They're just absolute sculptural perfection. But also, this is something that I used to do from time to time. When we lived, where we lived at the beginning of the pandemic, downtown, we lived there for a couple of years before the pandemic, we lived really, we lived in basically the flower district. And so I would go and buy cut flowers on a relatively frequent basis. There were often cut flowers in our home. What I would do is I would go to the flower market and I would buy like three or four peonies just the peonies, not, again, not this big, big bouquet, not this riot of flowers, but just a couple of stems. And even though I think you can buy cut flowers at the grocery store, like we could technically place an order with our groceries, that's not what I want. You know, like just having these couple of stems of one kind of flower and watching them open over time, that's what I want. And that's a thing that to me, I won't be able to have again until after quarantine is over. It's a thing that I've been, a little thing, obviously, but a thing that used to be a feature of my life that I've been deprived of during this quarantine that I've been waiting for, waiting until after this is over before I can have it again. But because it was my birthday and because I end up taking this, these stems of lilies out to my writing studio and keeping them separate, all of a sudden I found myself once again receiving the gifts of that choice of, you know, having flowers around. And I, I, there's no, I don't know if there's a takeaway. That's it. I just, I've told you. <laughs> I've been sitting, thinking about what's cheering me up, wanting to remember to write down what's cheering me up. And right before me, at every time I sort of think about it, right in front of my eyes are these flowers. And the other day I was just like, you know, those flowers have been significantly <laughs> cheering me up. And there have been some days when it when it's felt like the only good thing. You know what I mean? Not the only actually, because I have a couple other things on this list towards the end that are just like everyday things or relentlessly good things, you know? But there have been some days when that's been, it's felt like the best moment. It's like looking at those flowers. And maybe there is a takeaway if you're someone who can acquire flowers like that, if you are going physically to, physically to the grocery store, if you have different resources, than the resources that I have, maybe it's something that you can try. Because if you do take a moment, the key is not just to get them, but to look at them every day. All right, let's talk about the television show now that we're all back together. The Dragon Prince. I finally watched The Dragon Prince. And it's funny, I there's some shows, some shows that I knew, like I watched towards the beginning of quarantine, I rewatched Avatar The Last Airbender, the entire thing. That's something that I already knew about on my own. I think that maybe all of the other shows that I've really binged and loved and been so glad that I watched that are kind of in that same vein have been recommendations from you that were derived from the fact that I loved that. So some of you were like, if you like Avatar The Last Airbender, you'll probably like Steven Universe. And I watched Steven Universe, the whole entire thing from beginning to end, and I loved it. And then some of you were like, if you liked Avatar and Steven Universe, you'll like She-Ra and the Princess of Power. And I watched She-Ra from beginning to end and I absolutely loved it. And I've talked, I think, about all of these and various what's cheering me up right now. And then one of you or some of you were like, I, I saw it on Netflix and I remembered that I'd seen it in the comments. Some of you being like, if you liked it, then you'll probably like The Dragon Prince on Netflix. And indeed it is written, it's not produced by the guys who made Avatar or the creators of Avatar, but the head writer, I think, or one of the main writers of Avatar The Last Airbender is one of the creators of this show and like the head writer of this show. And when I started watching it, it took me a while to get into it, almost like the entire first season or half of the first season. It just felt like it was trying very hard to be like Avatar, but there was kind of something missing. So for a couple of weeks, I only watched it one or two episodes each weekend when I was in the bathtub, because this is what I do. I take a bath on the weekend, and while I'm in the bath, I watch a show. So I just, I watched an episode or two, the first bath, and then the entire, it was like an entire week, and then the next weekend I watched an episode or two, 
And I think it went on like that for like three or four weeks. So I probably got four or five, yeah, eight, nine, maybe the entire first season in. Yeah, you know, it was. It was the, it was the very last episode of the first season that got me. I, I found myself sitting there enthralled. And then I kind of like whizzed through the next two seasons. And it's not over. There are only three seasons available to watch, but apparently, I mean, I got, I thought that it was going to be just like a three season. I don't know why I assumed that it was like done because maybe because all the other shows I've been watching lately have been like, they've come to the end and I just didn't look into it. And I thought as I was getting closer to the end of the third season, I was like, wow, they better wrap this up because you're getting close to the end, but they didn't wrap it up. It just ended. And now, you know, they're making, they're currently making season four. So now I have to wait for season four to come out to find out what happens. All I have to say about it is that if you like Avatar like I did and you liked Steven Universe and you liked She-Ra and the Princess of Power and you haven't watched Dragon Prince yet, just give it a chance, like stick it out, get to the, se the second season and you know, it might grow on you the way that it did on me. Let's talk about my month by month New, New Year's resolutions because that's actually, they have been, I actually do think cheering me up is possibly the right term because the thing, and I, I, I probably mentioned this in like that check-in that I did or something, or maybe it was just in one of my little Patreon check-ins that I talked about it, I can't remember, but I know that I've talked about this on camera before. The fact that I have been doing a different New Year's resolution every month. <laughs> so my January resolution was dry January. My February resolution was to post on Instagram most days. That's what it ended up being. And my March resolution is no sugar. And I think that my April resolution might be clothing oriented again. I, I think I might do like a, a month where I dress for work completely every Monday, Monday through Friday. And then I have like a weekend wardrobe. I think I might do something like that for April. I haven't totally decided, but my, my new year's resolution was essentially to make a different resolution every month and stick to that resolution for the month. And the thing that I've been meaning to say again, or that I want to talk about in this video, but that I know I've mentioned at some point, I've felt the effects of sticking to whatever the monthly resolution is each month on other aspects of my life. Every month I'm like, which one should I do? I have like a variety of them. In January, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do dry January. But in the middle of January, I was starting to think like, what should the February one be? And one of the ones I considered for February when I was mid January was to put my stuff away. For me, what that means is like, when I do my laundry and then I bring my clean laundry back in my arms into my space, I often will put my clean laundry down like in the corner of the carpet or like in my chair. And then it'll be like two days before I fold that laundry and actually put it away. I was imagining that I might have a resolution that's just like, put your shit away right away, no matter what, no matter what it is. So I fin when I finished filming and I've got like makeup all over my desk, immediately put it all the way back in its place. When I finish doing my laundry, the laundry goes straight from the dryer or straight from the clothesline into the drawers or into the thing. Like just don't have, don't ever procrastinate this one specific thing, which is putting my stuff away. So I was like, maybe that's what I'll do for February because I feel like that could really improve my quality of life. But then I just started doing it anyway. I started, it was like just thinking of it, switched the flip, flipped the switch, and I started doing it anyway. And I'm telling you, I've been doing it ever since. I've been doing it ever since. It's like this supplementary resolution that just happened on its own as a result of the fact that I was sticking to the other resolutions that I actively set for myself. So then when we got to February, I was like, well, I'm already doing it. It doesn't make sense to make that my resolution because I'm already doing it. But I just in general have found myself a little bit closer to center, like a, just a, a little bit more empowered to check myself before I wreck myself when it comes to these little self-care decisions or these decisions of habit and procrastination. The New Year's resolution project of doing a different resolution every month has helped me be stronger in that regard. And it has been cheering me up on an almost daily basis. Okay, that's pretty much it. Those are all of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about. I do have it on my list to once again mention the compassion class that my friend Julia Frodal teaches, not the Julia I live with, but different Julia. 
I took it at the end of last year and through to January, and then I took the second class, she offers two. The second one's more like applied, like you're applying the concepts. Once again, you know, cheering me up is too weak a word. It's not like they've just cheered me up. It's like they've helped me really dig into what feels like a more sustainable and healthier way of existing in the loam of my own life. You know, it's like I'm growing better. I just feel like I continue to reap the benefits of having decided to take that class and to make an active development of the heart and of compassion a part of my life this year. So it's been amazing. And I think that the last little list of things that I have, which is just this little list, <laughs> the baby that I live with, Julianne Oliver's baby, cheers me up all the time. I'm so lucky to be living with a baby right now because you just can't be, you, you just can't sustain like the darkness and the blues unbroken days and days at a time when you're constantly seeing a baby. <laughs> so I, so that's been, I have to put that on the list. I also feel that way about Sadie, my little cat. I do think that the compassion class has made me more to attuned to the little things like this that maybe I'm prone to take them for granted because they're here all the time. But setting aside time to think about my heart and think about love makes me aware of how much, how cheered up I am by just these presences, these beautiful presences in my life and makes me actively grateful for them. One way to say it is that it makes me aware that I'm being cheered up even when I feel like I'm not. But another way to, to say it is that being aware of it cheers me up itself. A third thing on this little list is that my gr my grandmother, who's 99, got vaccinated finally. It was a, a huge relief and, and really, really cheered me up. So um, it has to go on this list as well. And it also really cheered me up that Joe edited that video of mine and um, it should have already gone up on my channel. I think it will have gone up on Wednesday, but He's been working on it for a really long time. And so finally being able to share it with you and just overall how how silly he is and how fun it was. That's been adding joy to my life on an almost daily basis over the, you know, the pro over the course of the weeks it's taken him to edit it and then um, posting it and sharing it and seeing your comments and everything. It's all been really great. So there are all of these little things, these little things. I think being able to let them cheer me up <laughs> is a matter of slowing down, um, giving them the time. And that is definitely a, a result of, of committing to a contemplative practice of uh, trying to meditate most days and just um, commit to contemplation and um, you know spending that time a little bit every day, making that space in my brain. And I have been really grateful for that lately. So, that does it. Those are all of the things, big and small, that have been cheering me up. What should I watch next, you guys? I don't have any TVs right now. I'm just reading books and um, playing 15 minutes of Animal Crossing every day and watching Drag Race. So if there's anything you think I would like, do let me know. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.